Hey guys and welcome to my side hustle video. Now I've watched a lot of these videos and some of them are pretty good and some of them are pretty rubbish or a little bit too niche and I've seen quite a few uh, suggest something like surveys which if you've ever done surveys you'll know that they are a complete not waste of time, I mean I guess you're getting a paid but the payment is an absolute pittance. Sometimes you don't get um, even cash, it's just basically vouchers. So I'm not sure that that's a really good suggestion. So I thought I would put together a list of things which I feel are pretty good side hustles and can earn you a hefty sum of money. Now the first part of the list is going to be the side hustles that is going to earn you the most money and then we'll go down the list and down the list is going to be those side hustles that take slightly longer and that don't earn you as much immediately. So the first thing I'm going to start off with is getting a part-time job. Now if you get a part-time job during the evenings or the weekends such as babysitting, working in a pub or working a retail job, you could earn hundreds of pounds per month on top of your base level income which could make a real real difference. Now obviously it's more work and you have to make sure that you're rested enough and that you can actually do it but these part-time jobs could be quite flexible even one day a week can make a huge difference. When I was a student I was working re retail and I used to work in Waterstones and that for me was a good £400 a month and £400 a month extra just for one day a week is uh, is great. It, it, like I used to go on holidays and I used to obviously be a student so my outgoings were very minimal but now if I had that money it would be great. It would just be a real top up to my base salary. Now I do do one of these side hustles myself and when we get to that side hustle suggestion I'm going to go through how much I make and whether it's worth it or not but if I wasn't doing that actual side hustle I would definitely be looking into doing a part-time job. Now I know when you have a full-time job uh, and you're in the career ladder and something vocational you might think of working in a pub or working in retail as a step back and you really shouldn't that's just society having their judgments don't listen to them those extra few hundreds can make such a difference to your life your saving goals if you're looking to make a nest egg for a, for a house for a down payment on a house or a deposit for a house i've watched so many like american youtubers i'm using like down payment but you could save all of that money put it towards a deposit for a house you could even invest that money and i'm going to go go into investings as well um towards the end of this video so so yes, really getting a part-time job is a very immediate way to earn a lot more money. The second suggestion I have is to freelance out a skill. So if you are able to do something, like if you're a really great writer or if you can animate, I can do 2D animations and I looked into how much it would cost to freelance out that skill and I know that I could make about £500 to animate a six minute video which is essentially about two weeks worth of work. Now it's not something that I'm looking for right now just because my personal projects take up so much time but if you have the time and if you have the skill then why not freelance out your skill and there are several websites that you can look at. You can look at Fiverr as one of the most basic ones. Obviously it's called Fiverr but you don't have to charge five pounds for your skill and people are willing to pay for good good people. Start off slow if you don't have, a, have any kind of recommendations. Start off pricing yourself fairly low, not ridiculously low, obviously it needs to be worth your time, but uh, build up recommendations and you can take it from there. The third side hustle I would recommend is clinical trials. There's something in the UK called Flu Camp where you can sign up to be inoculated with the flu vaccine and you earn £100 a day, I think. And obviously if they can find a cure for the common flu, that would make pharmaceutical companies make so much money. So they do these trials um, every year and you can look up different clinical trials in your area and see if you're comfortable doing it. Now, different people are going to be comfortable doing different things. My cousin, for example, tested out this toothpaste and made 200 to 300 pounds after a week or so. I don't know what was involved, but it was really basically non-obtrusive. It wasn't harmful to his health and it was quite low risk. So you could look for clinical trials like that. Something more involved you may not be comfortable doing. I personally don't think I would play Russian roulette with my health, but it really depends on your cautious levels. These clinical trials are very well regulated, but there could be risks to it. They do say that there are risks to it. So it's something that you need to think about for yourself, whether you're comfortable doing it or not, but they do pay pretty good money. The fourth way to make money could be through a language that you know so if you know English and another useful language such as Spanish, French, Mandarin, Cantonese, 
you could possibly teach that language. Now, I know, I know I said like another useful language. Obviously, all languages are useful, but those are some of the more popular languages and you'll, be, you'll find it easier to make money if you know those languages. Even if you don't know another language, you could sign up to be a tutor of English, for example, and you could be a native speaker that somebody trying to learn English could sit and chat to and you can get paid uh, through that. So there are websites available where you can chat to somebody trying to learn the language and you get paid for your time. Another great way to earn good money is to retrain and I watched a video once where somebody was saying everybody always needs a joiner and they always need a plumber and that's completely true. Now you could look into one of these courses and I think they cost, and some can be quite reasonable. I looked into carpentry once and it cost about like 400 pounds for, um, I think it was a week long course. But once you've got that course under your belt, you'd be a lot more comfortable with these practical skills and then you can, in your spare time, Put yourself up on TaskRabbit, which is one of those websites where you can sell your skills and then do some handiwork for people near near where you live. If you, you're kind of green-fingered, you could be a gardener. If you can retrain as um, a plumber or something, you could do that in your spare time. And also you could stay very, very basic and just do cleaning and just be a cleaner for, for the weekend and earn a little bit of extra money. Another way to earn great money is to rent out what you have. So if you have a flat, you could get a roommate um, or you can make yourself scarce and rent it out as an Airbnb if it's within a, di a desirable location for tourists. Um, if you're not in a desirable location, I'm not quite sure how much money you would get and you'd also need to you know, make yourself scarce, stay with your parents. So it might not be feasible, but if it is feasible, it can earn you a pretty nice sum of money. One of my friends um, made thousands of pounds her boyfriend had a really nice flat in London and she and her boyfriend put it up on Airbnb and although it was inconvenient for them to keep going back to her parents house or his parents house they had a few thousand pounds at the end of the year which they um, used to help them fund their wedding so that was really really useful also if you have a car and you're a good driver and you've got some spare weekends you might want to think about becoming an uber driver and all of these things give you a lot of flexibility so you can do this all around your kind of day-to-day -day job. Now we're getting onto the things that don't give you that much money but it depends on what your circumstances are and who you are so my next suggestion would be to have a clear out and sell things. Now I um, had a clear out and I didn't bother selling any of these things because for me it was more important to be clutter free and I just wanted to get rid of stuff. Also I don't really buy a lot of designer pieces. My stuff is nice but it's more like high street clothing Thing and I don't think I would have made a lot of money but who knows maybe I would have but I, I couldn't be bothered but I know that my sister sells a lot of stuff and she makes 50 quid here a month and 20 quid here here a month now it's not vast sums of money we're talking about and it also depends on the items that you have but if you are having a clear out then you might consider selling them on say Facebook uh, marketplace or Poshmark is something that I hear about quite a lot if you have nice designer gear to sell now we come to the side hustle that I have and that is having a YouTube channel and or you could be a blogger or an Instagrammer or all of those things. Now I know that people have misconceptions of how much money you can earn on YouTube. There's a lot of factors into how much you can earn. I have an animated educational channel, that's like my main channel and I honestly don't earn a lot of money. It's really done for the love of it and I think the niche that I've chosen, the niche that I'm passionate about isn't really well paid. However, if you have a different niche where you do really, really well, you can make a lot of money, but saying that it's a real kind of a game of chance, your videos have to click with the public, it has to be served up by YouTube, you have to remember on your feed you see the most successful videos out there which you, YouTube curates for you, so that is not the norm. You Most channels are quite small and to earn a lot of money you have to put in a lot of hard work and we're talking many years into the future and even then you might not make a lot of money. So I've been doing YouTube since 2010 and granted that my channel has changed directions and I'm not the most consistent but I really can't be because I actually need to have a full-time income so I 
can actually have a decent lifestyle. If you're single, if you don't have a family, if you've got a lot of time, then maybe YouTube and pursuing a YouTube and blogging career is for you. I just want to be realistic with you as to what's involved because I see a lot of people get super disheartened when YouTube doesn't take off and it's just because their goalposts and their, um, their expectations are not aligned to what is actually realistic. But YouTube is a lot of fun. You should definitely go for it if you're passionate about it. But just be prepared that it's not one of those side hustles where you can make a lot of money very quickly and you might not make a lot of money um, through the entirety of your YouTube career. But saying that, there are many benefits that outweigh not making that much money. The next side hustle that I'm going to suggest is investing. Um, there are lots of movements on YouTube, especially the FIRE movement, which is financial independence, retire early, where people save up to 70% of their income and invest it. And what they're looking to do is wait several years and wait for the interest to accumulate, for their savings to accumulate, and their interest to get to the point where they can just live of that interest. Now they invest their money in different places. They invest it in real estate, they invest it in stocks and shares. I don't know too much about stocks and shares, but what I do know is that you should definitely start with a high interest savings account. So for example, max out all the ISAs there are available, all the banking products there are available. Now I will be doing more research into this because personal finance and minimalism is something that I'm pretty passionate about. It started at the beginning of this year and I'll have more videos on this but as I continue my financial journey I will be sharing what I learn but so far I've learned this that you can make a pretty decent income in your retirement if you invest often consistently and if you start investing early by saying this you have to do it for many years you're not going to you know invest 20 quid today and then be able to retire in five years time that's not how it works so you have to be realistic again and do your sums and find out exactly how much you have to um, save the younger you are and if you if you're single the easier it is to invest because when you start thinking of having a family moving out all of that stuff obviously you don't have that much disposable income. So if you are younger, definitely start thinking about saving early and investing early. That's a great financial decision and something that they should really teach us in schools. The next side hustle I'm going to suggest is to make stuff and sell them on Etsy. Now, if you're at all creative, if you're good at graphic design, if you can make stickers, if you make clothes, jewelry, whatever, set up an Etsy, uh, Etsy shop. Now saying that again, it's not going to be instant success for you. It takes a lot of time. It is basically building your own business. You have to come, have the skills and the entrepreneurial kind of spirit where you might be knocked down and you have to keep going and going. But it's definitely an option for those of you who have these kind of creative skills to share. And finally, if you do want to do surveys, you can do surveys if you've got the time, if you've got the wherewithal to, and the patience to do it then it's definitely an option for you. I personally wouldn't recommend things like surveys and couponing. I do find them a little bit exploitative and I do think that coupons end up making you spend more money on junk that you don't really really need. Now that's my personal experience of it and that's how, what I see um, looking on from the outside. It might be very different if you are a couponer and it might really work for you but those aren't things that I'd really suggest. So that kind of ends this video. I hope you found it useful. This is a new type of video for me to do, but personal finance, as I said, is something that I'm quite interested in. I wanna make more videos on it. Um, and I want to make content that's actually useful for people like me, you know, I can go out there and think about getting a part-time job. I can go out there and think about retraining. These are practical things that I can do. Whereas, you know, starting a YouTube channel from scratch, expecting it to be like, you know, a mega success and get millions of subscribers, that's not really that realistic. So I wanted to do a video where I give you realistic options and slightly more ambitious options. I wouldn't say any of these are completely unrealistic on my list. So I do hope you found this video helpful. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe and as always I will see you next time. Bye!